Well, boys and girls, it's that time again. It's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, coming to you live from two undisclosed locations. It's your favorite Dirt Up show, Standing in the Gaps podcast. We want to welcome everybody back. And the first thing I want to say is how humbled and honored I am to have a group of people willing to take an hour a week and or an hour and a half, two hours, and listen to mine and Aaron. Uh, random thoughts that are biblically inspired and just it's obviously like-minded people coming together and standing in the gaps so as our numbers decrease i want you to know the early adopting and what i mean by early adopting for the if you don't know the term it means that people that come in early do you folks the listeners right now are early adopters so i don't know whether two of you or two thousand the number's not important i i always talk about this the numbers do matter, but in the sense that quality, how much quality, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I believe we have quality listeners. I agree. Yeah. So, so anyway, welcome again. And I want to remind you that, and Aaron, we'll get into a little of this. This isn't supposed to be a, a one-sided communication here. It's interactive. You got Aaron will talk, talk about the media's medium that you can do, but you definitely interact with the show. And we do want to hear your feedback. Those of you who hate us, send us the mail. We love it because we love you. See, if God loves you, we love you. We don't marginalize anybody. I'm going to tell you the reality. I love Muslims just as much as I love Christians. Arabs just as much as I love Jews, just as much as, believe it or not, Christian. I love atheists. I love then Buddhists. I love people because they're children of God. I will never put down a created being of the Father. Never. I used to. Not anymore. So anyway, we want to welcome you. We're excited about tonight's topic. It's called, It's All About the Children. And this is for part two, because we had, it's all about the family last week. Now we're doing, it's all about the children, because as we discussed in the last program, Satan is vehemently opposed to the family unit. He hates the family unit. Why? Because we procreate. He can't procreate. He can only, what's the word? He can't even duplicate. He can only deceive. And he can only pervert, and he can only counter. That's his world. And he can't be redeemed. Guess what? We get to procreate. We get to dream. We get to have fun. We get to see the sun, the moon, and the stars, which although he's the king of this realm, he can't see it. I'll get into that some other time. But And I may have on a previous show anyway. But the thing is that he cannot partake in any of the blessings we have. That's why he hates family. That's why he especially hates children, because they represent the next generation. Every generation that gets born is a punch to that sucker's face. It's like he has to go into a 12-round fight, and he thinks he's going to win. Aaron, isn't this funny? How about being the guy in the fight that thinks he's going to win, and he loses every time? And mm -hmm. he then he finds out at the last fight that the fight's been fixed in, in God's favor the whole time. That's the force we deal with. That's the freaking joker, loser that we deal with. Idiot. Fool. Scumbag. Whatever you want to call him. I hate his guts. I wish he would die. Oh, that's right. He did die a permanent death in a lake of fire. So I just want to remind him. That's why when I have communion each morning, I throw it in his direction. I smather the blood of Jesus. Can't do nothing. He, he doesn't get to re be with me, but I'm in it. I'm watched in it. I'm sanctified, set apart. And right away, I'm going to get mail on that, Aaron. Because they're going to say I'm blaspheming. I'm making light and joke. Of, yeah, okay, whatever. Jesus had a sense of humor, folks. How do you know? Because I talk to him every once in a while, and he's a funny guy. He's serious. He's like, his face is like plant. Don't mess with him. <laughs> but he, especially the Holy Spirit has a sense of humor. And the Father does, too. But the Holy Spirit's definitely a while there. So, wow, well, I didn't expect to go here very quickly. So. Anyway, I'm going to turn it back over to my Mr. Sterling. My, my special, affectionately call my Mr. Sterling, Mr. Man. Go ahead. Yeah, um... It's crazy because the Bible's been around forever. Scripture's been around for a long time. And the enemy n knows that. The, the enemy knows the end of that book. The enemy knows what's going to happen to him. But he still fights because he wants us to get to a place where we begin to blame God for our problems, where we begin to lose faith. And I want to stand in the gap for people that saying, oh, I don't know if I believe this anymore. Don't lose faith because the thing is, is God wins. God's never left me, 
nor has he forsaken me any time in my life. There's times that I thought were really hard, really. I was like, where's my next meal coming from? This thing that happened against me was wrong. Why did that happen? But looking back, I'm like, God has never left me nor for second. But anyways, if you want to connect with us, want to bring forth suggestions on things we should talk about, positive or negative criticism, you can either send us an email, but the best way to get a hold of us directly is through Facebook Messenger. We have on our Facebook page that you can message us. We also have it on our website, right when you go onto our website, standinginthegaps.org, it pops up where you can send us a comment, send us a question, send us hate mail, love mail, whatever. That's probably the best way to get a hold of us directly. And then also, if you want to be a supporter, we do have Patreon, many levels that you can give many ways you can give on there and that's pretty much that for that but the regardless enemy is a liar and enemy just wants to destroy and conquer and god wants to give you life and not just a little life an abundant life and uh we're getting off there but we're very passionate about our faith and you might have your own faith and that's fine i thank you for still listening to us because we do bring up other points. We do talk about the state of uh, our nation. We talk about the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we just share the truth. The whole and truth or nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, so I want to speak to those that don't believe in God, don't get upset and think all we're going to talk about is God. I prefer an intelligent whatever you term, whatever you hold on, if you hold to yourself, that's okay. We just, that's our foundation. That's who we are. And we get into like Aaron talked about, there's three categories. We get into the political, economic, social, social, I have some subcategories off of it, but it's political, economical, and social commentary. Mm -hmm. That's our show, which is commentator. We're commentating on the state of our nation. Every time we get on this show, that's what we're talking about talk about the issues that matter most to Bible believing believers and people that have a moral compass that don't believe in the Bible, but you believe in family, you believe in do unto others that you would have them do unto you. You're not going to stab somebody in the back because you're upset or mentally ill, or you're not going to walk into work with an AK-47 because you're, you're, you hate your boss. That's not the kind of people we cater to. We pray for those people. We pray that never happens, but we don't cater to them. We don't cater to Antifa. You're a bunch of freaking idiot losers. I, I don't cater to Antifa. I used to be an anarchist. I could show, you know, Aaron, picture me with a, they used to call them rat tails back in the eighties. So I had a rat tail and I had spiked hair, totally spiked with a big A anarchy. I would be the first one to want to burn a flag because you know why I went to liberal school after Catholic high school, I rebelled, went to liberal college and that's where I learned to be an anarchist. So Clash is my favorite band. I don't know if any of you Clash listeners are out. One of their first songs was I'm So Bored with the USA. That was one of their songs to claim to fame. So that's, that was my life. So look at what God's done, Aaron. Can you believe I'm even sharing that? Look at how far I've come. Yeah, my hair used to be it used to have like hair. six inch spikes back when yeah. in my rebellion days. My, my favorite hairstyling gel was Got to Be Glued. And it was this big white paste. And I swear that I, like I can take it and put it on my head or I can do my science project with it. It's all uh -oh. the same. And then I found Jesus and now I'm bald. <laughs> but that's okay. That's Even okay. You know, every hair, numbered every hair on your head, you thought to rip them all off. So there's no <laughs> I'm bald, but the thing is in the world, I was depressed. In the world, I was angry. In the world, I tried everything to fill a void in me. And now God's saying, no, I'm filling that void. And I'm taking you down a path. We also want to talk about the children. Yes. And that's 
a, a very big subject. We're going to talk about multiple things. Um, in the world, like there's, you see the, you watch TV and you see the feed the children's commercial. If you give $5, you can feed this amount of children and stuff like that. And back in the nineties, those were big on TV. And a lot of them were found out to be frauds and fronts to, and people were just pocketing the money. And that said, but one thing I, I really liked, and there's this lady that out of the blue just said, we're going to move and we're going to find the worst country in the world. And we're going to move there and we're going to help children there. Wow. And we're in America. Yeah. This individual, individual, no, it wasn't America. It wasn't the country, but sure. But I'm, I'm thinking it is now, but back then it was Mozambique, Africa. Uh, And this lady, her name's Heidi Baker, grabbed her husband and moved to one of the worst places in the world at the time and made her effort to made an effort to rescue and to help children and to feed children and now now that place in the world because of her work and her desire to just pack up everything and go they're seeing a freedom and an abundance that is just mind blowing and so we say Oh, can one person really make a difference? And it, it, it does take what one, I believe one person can't make a difference, but one person with God, God can make all the difference. And that's what Heidi Baker did. And the thing is we need that so much. Our big thing on this show is the homeless. And there's also a lot of orphan homeless children in the U S right now. And they need, they need our prayers, our supports. Man. Man. Yeah. Heidi, I, what does she have? 50,000 churches now? Something, yeah, crazy some, like something crazy like that. Yeah. And from zero to, uh, to that in, in, in a very short time, you know, she didn't go when she was in her twenties. She went when she was older in life and she's still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. The interesting thing about Heidi is She'd be thrown out of most churches today because she's what they call manifest. She got whacked by God. Toronto was on the floor for like three and a half hours or three weeks. No, it was three weeks. Three weeks she was in God's presence. Her husband had to help her out and stuff like that. So, yeah, God is a powerful God. You want to challenge him? Great prayer to pray. Some of you guys that are like live life on the edge, say, hey, God, prove to me you're real. Watch what happens. Pray that prayer. Especially mm-hmm. those of you don't believe in him, just go ahead, challenge. Say, God, show me that you're real. He takes that first spirit. Just go, just be prepared. Yeah. If, uh, if, if you have an, an open mind, and the thing is, all these atheists would come and say, oh, you Christians are, or you followers of Christ are, are closed minded. And I'm like, really? I had to open my mind and say, God, are you real? and see what happens. And so I, I encourage you, if you think we're a bunch of lunatics, then that's your opinion. But before you go and throw a stone at us, open your mind and say, God, if you're real, show me. And, and if he doesn't come through and show you, I'll stand there. I won't move. And you can throw the rock because that's how confident I am in the Lord. And also I'm confident that the things that we talk about The things that we pray about on this show and in our personal life, I'm believing and expecting him to come through. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I come differently. Sorry. I come differently from Aaron. I wouldn't let you throw the rock at me, but I'd give you 10,000 bucks if he didn't come and answer our challenge. And I don't have $10,000 on me right now. So that'd be a lot. (laughs) So anyway. Didn't mean to cut you off there, but I do want to remind a couple of housekeeping notes that we didn't hit. We welcome advertisers. Barrett and I are bootstrapping this project. I say it's a project because it's God's project, and this project means that 
it could change. It's his agenda, it's his program, all the world, which we hold things very loosely. We hold one thing tightly, that's the hem of his garment, but everything else we hold, we've learned to hold loosely. So advertising, it's uh, very inexpensive. You can talk to the man, you can email the man. What's your email address, Aaron? The email address is on the website. Okay. So just hit the website, hit the email address, and say you're interested in advertising in our advertising department. We'll give you a call. <laughs> you're looking at, well, you can't see them, but Aaron's our advertising department. This episode is sponsored by my new book, From the Prison to the Palace. You can find it as an ebook and a paperback on Amazon. The link is in the description. So, so anyway, second thing is, is like us. Follow us on YouTube and share. One of the ways you can stand in the gap is be responsible for your community and share it amongst your community. And oh yeah, we were talking about hair care products before. I forgot to give a shout out to the Jerry Curl. Remember the Jerry Curl? My my African American brothers and sisters out there and people of color, the Jerry Curl. That was back in the eighties too. Well, <laughs> what was the name of what you used there? Got to be glued. So while I was wearing what it was the nineties for you or the two thousands, what was it? Late nineties. So why? I don't see the Matt or nineties Jerry curls. So I still may be around. They're not. So anyway, shout out to the rap products. Look at that. We're sending money to Jerry curl. I forget the name again. What is it? One more time. Got to be glued. There, yeah, there you go. Got to be glued. You better be watching. Want the bench to It's all about the men. We got to do a show here at one time. I definitely want to do it. It's all about the men. Probably one of our greatest shows. Because it is all about the, see, you don't love money. The love of money is the root of all evil. People that lack money love money. Some of them. If they do, they're just as much filthy slob as the greedy guys like Harvey Weinstein. So anyway, when, when, by the way, I don't, I don't judge Harvey. I, I love Harvey. I pray that for his redemption. So what were you going to say? When money is the everything in your life, then that's where it's wrong. But when money is a tool that you use and that's what we want to do on this broadcast all the funds that you give us if you partner with us one we give to different charities and two we use it to further along this project so for those that want to give that's on patreon but let's get on the subject of kids tell us what's on your heart about that a lot so i've got to be careful I really have to choose because I have so much content in the area. I'll give you my most recent experience. So there's this place in Thailand, and it's just picture an open air market, like a permanent carnival, like without the ride. So you got these food booths lined up. So you got, and you got tables, you got families coming together. And in the center of the state where, by the way, Thailand's music is awesome because they do all 70s, 80s, and 90s. American stuff. It's so awesome. You get everything from Elvis to the Pixie to the guy Elton John to to Hotel California dude. They got Glenn Fry. You got such a battering. It's just it's awesome. From like eighties to just I hear every night with country. So anyway, they just love America from that regard. So they had in the center, they have a center stage and you have a dance floor where you get to dance like this huge. So picture like a place that seats like five hundred people. And you got a huge dance floor. So now there's these teenage girl, probably as young as 10, I want to say 10 to 18 years old. All right. And they're dressed in these not too risque outfits. They're more like prom girls in America. Okay. They're really not over sexualized by any. But here's the thing they're, they're, they've got a, I'll call her what she is. And, and, and I'll be kind. She's an effing ringling leader. Okay, she's posing as a dance instructor, but she's an effing wrigglinger. I'm the proving in a moment. So now these girls are dancing in formation, and they're twerking, and I'm pissed. I, I am pissed. I, God shows me right away. I see the demons attached to these people. I'm like, oh, no. I said, this is not happening in front of me, not on my watch. So I, I, my wife stopped me. This is when my wife didn't recognize the justice I carry. She now understands me. So, so she understands I'm not going to make a fool of myself and really confront it the way I feel like I'm, I have a strategy. So I just, I walk up and I go like this, Aaron, and God is my witness to what I do. I go like this. I just, it's not necessary. And I go like this again. It's not necessary. 
I said, this is abominable. And they're pretending to ignore me. You know what I'm saying? Like they can understand English the most high can. I was like, this is not necessary. And I walk away. So now later on, the music playing and now we're dancing. I, I love to dance. I'm out there. I forget what dance. It may have been dance to green by, by a band, a Swedish band. Mom, they did the musical Mama Me. Come on, Aaron. Like, yeah, Saba Rocks. So yeah, Dance to Queen. I love that song. So anyway, you can dance have the time of your life. You dig that scene. Dance to Queen. So anyway, Mariel's Wedding. I'll plug that one of those. Have you ever seen that movie, Aaron? Awesome Australian movie. It was Tony Collette, who's a famous actress today. Very first role, she played a 16 year old underdog girl, and she gets everything in the hand. She gets her boy, she gets her cows from the prison to the palace. And some of you are going to say, oh, there's perverted stuff. Relax. Okay. Light is perverted. You know what I'm saying? It's a great prison to the palace. Story of Joseph. She had a dream. Her father was a pig. Her father put her down. I don't think he sexually abused her, but he just put her down and she warned. She warned. Great movie. So, anyway, I don't know why I went there, but I guess I you know. So, now I'm watching, I'm aware of my surroundings, and I'm watching the, this effing ringleader single to one of the girls to me up. What do you call, if she's under 16, what do you call that? I think I call pedophilia, don't I? Yeah. Right there out in the open. Right out in the open. Well, why did God allow that to happen? Because God was providential, because he wanted to expose me, my eyes to remind me what a fine line I walk and the fact that it's available everywhere in this country, everywhere. It's a shame. Everybody on the left, especially, and liberals, the loony libs, not, not the moderate Democrats, I respect you, moderate Democrats, but progressives, they yell about Trump closing the border. He didn't close it for illegal immigrants. I want to share something with you. His parents were illegal immigrants. Look it up. His parents were illegal immigrants. You know that. So here's the thing. He didn't close the board for illegal immigrants. He did. But his real purpose was sex trafficking. So what I, I don't know this for sure, but when I meet him one day, I believe I will meet him one day. When I meet him, I'm going to ask him, is this kind of how it played out? I believe Melania has said to him, Donald, when you get into talk because Melani is from one of those countries, that sex trafficking is prevalent. I think mm -hmm. she said to Donald, this is what goes on in my country. And he was just appalled because he's got moral. He was just appalled and he went after it. That's what I personally believe. Yeah. Human trafficking is a, a very, very big thing. And I know that when, when I was a teenager, I didn't know about this. I was in Connecticut and. There was one of the towns in Connecticut had a raid on this house because they had girls locked up in cages in Connecticut, in the U.S., in the land of the free. And the thing is, I'm 41 now. That was when I was maybe 18 oh. and my eyes were open to what what's happening and it's Far worse, far worse now, especially in the U.S. The fact that they have a special hand sign to tell if somebody is a slave. They have a special hand sign that you can show somebody so they can know, hey, we got to get this person away from this other person. The fact that the world needs something like that now, it's just, it's a very, very dark place and it's not just places in thailand in brazil they have a legal prostitution age of 12 what a legal prostitution age of 12 a 12 year old can legally be a prostitute in brazil like stuff like that just absolutely sickens me and then you hear about, I don't want to bring in any names because there, there's not 100% proof that these individuals have done stuff like this, but there is celebrities that literally take young girls and young boys and take them up in an airplane 
where it's now outside of the jurisdiction of, of whatever and do these acts with these minors. And these are celebrities that you would know. And it just sickens me that we're in a place where that is, that is common that we had our first pilot episode where we commentated on what happened in with a senator and stuff like that. And it's just crazy on how this is such a common thing in this in the world. And not just in in Brazil or Thailand or some third world country in the US, in the land of the free, there's a lot of people that aren't free. And during these major sporting events, like the Super Bowl and the World Cup, huge human trafficking time. I'm happy for, I, I don't know the name of the organization, but there's this one organization that makes soap for hotels and they give the hotels the soaps for free. And on the soap is a number where they can call if they're being trafficked. They can contact them. They can send people and, and they send out these soap bars during these events at, in these cities. It was very huge during the Olympics. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm glad for organizations like that. Do you remember it was love one? I think it was love for 142. Love one forty two. Go ahead. You can talk about them. Yeah, you probably know more than me, but Sean Boltz has this ministry called Love 142. It's all about, they, they rescue, don't they, don't they rescue the children? Or he's affiliated? No. I think he's affiliated with them. I don't remember the guy's name, but he's out of Connecticut. And they literally go to these countries, especially countries where this stuff is legal. It's allowed. And they go in and they, and these followers of Christ, these Christians break the law by taking these kids and abducting them out of the situation that they're in and put them into safe houses. And I'm glad for that, for organizations like Love 142. And also there's another one called Exodus Cry that is, is very big on rescuing people and then you have the, what was it, CFAM or something like that? Or what's it called? Christ for the Nation? Yeah, they do yeah, a little bit too, yeah. Yeah, and, so um, you, you could go directly to those if you want, or you could just become a member or donate to us because we'll be donating to those organizations. So not the ones that are, maybe not CFNA, but the first. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I, Iris Ministry, Tiny Booker that we talked about. Those are some of the ministries that we're throwing to. So, kind of that. yeah, it's amazing because you look at, were you done? Did I cut you off? Go no, ahead. go ahead. All right. No, you're good. All right. So it's amazing. But USA and Thailand are two of the worst countries in the world right now. I, Aaron and I were from the USA and, and now Romania, is, Aaron's telling me, is in the top eight. But here are the numbers. We're talking about a lot, but I want to quantify what we're talking about. In America, it's anywhere from 15,000 to 50,000 children a year. And in, in Thailand, it's a much smaller nation, it's 40,000 children under the age of 16. And by the way, that's not 16 to 12, folks. That's 16 to 3 or 2. And Anthony, how sick of an individual? How steered is your conscience? How much of an animal are you? You're not a human, in my opinion, at this point. Your animalistic behavior is taking over. You've crossed that boundary line where you go from living as a human to now living as a predator. You are just like a zebra. Not a zebra. You're just like a... Hyena. Yeah, thank you. Hyena, you're a predator. You're a scorpion. You're, you're not safe. You're poisonous. You ooze poison. You got one focus. By the way, just in case some of you pedophilia are out there, I love you. I love you enough to say that I know what hell's like. And, and some of you may write me and go ahead, but I've been there. 
and I know what it's like. And I have others, friends that have been there. And whatever your sin is, that's what gets played over and over again in your mind. Except now you have intense pain from it. Like furious, like gnashing, grinding, of like incredible torment. You never get out of that sin. Your major sin that you end up in hell because you've not been redeemed from it is what you live over. And so that section of hell looks, if you're that type of pervert, that section of hell looks like a phallic symbol. And you live that place from, from the rest of existence. You say, why would God do that? He's not the one who did that. Remember that. So anyway, oh, I didn't expect to go there tonight either. It's amazing that you look at all these children and my heart goes out to them because when there's a baby, somebody that can be sick, protect some animal, breath smells like shit, cigarette, coffee breath, and bourbon breath, decides to just mutilate them. And then you got these freaks, these religions that cut girls. I'm sorry, this is not a PG-13 program. The Bible's not PG-13. So folks, if you leave me, goodbye. Don't let those door hit you in the ass on the way out that you can't handle this. Why do you have HBO in your house? But they, they got the religion where they cut girls. That's okay. That's okay. Really? See, where are the people willing to stand in the cat? Where are you? Oh, Richie, I don't want to get hurt. I'm not asking you. Support the organization we're just talking about. You can play it safe. But I know there's some of you out there that are intimidated to make the first step. If you burn like I burn, by the way, I am nothing about it. It's personal. I'll not. I'll talk about it when the right time comes on this show. It's, if it burns you like it does me, do something about it. Stop mm-hmm. hiding under the cover. Let your light shine. Don't hide it under the lamp. Let it out. Let it out. Take a risk. Take your eyes off yourself. Put it on someone else. Put it on someone else. You're at that the store. And there's a mom with four kids, and their clothes aren't clean, their hair's okay. And she's saying, No, put the Kit Kat down. No, you can't have that. No, you can't have that. And she's got the great card. You make a judgment, say, Oh, she's a leech. She's a leech out of my paycheck. My tax. Really? That's rich. That's interesting. How about sewing into her? How about praying for that family that their children don't get sick? You imagine what's going through that mother's mind in Thailand? I wanted to have my sing- my wife, who's a single mom, come on this program. Maybe we'll edit that in down the road. But she's got stories about how you have to have one eye open when you're sleeping with a child. Think about it. Think about a, a mother in a hut, a, a dirt floor hut, no air con, staying awake, fanning her three-year-old daughter, and also staying awake because she doesn't want her daughter snatched. Every time they go to the mall together, she has to hold her tight. Where's God in this? He's right there, folks. He's right there. He didn't create the situation. Our perverted choices as free-thinking human beings created that situation, folks. Wake up and smell the coffee. Smell it. Don't blame a God that loves you. Don't blame. You can. He can handle it. He's got big shoulders. But it's not his fault. It's not. But guess what? It's responsibility. And he's got a plan for it. It's called redemption. It's called the cross. He has the solution. Mm-hmm. The salvation message is just as real in Thailand as it is in America. And also, we are his hands and feet. And so, yeah, the cross is the solution, but it's through that salvation, through that knowing of what he did, that, that we are empowered to make a difference. Or even if you don't believe in God. I still believe that there's still good people that that would also step out even if they didn't believe in God. But I lost my train of thought. Yeah, no, don't think we think of you as second class citizen because you're not. You're first class like we are. You're a human being, a free thinking human being. It just our life. You're different. That's all. It's a different life experience than yours. That's all it is. It's a different life, different filter, different reality. So if you want a different reality, if you're hungry for a different reality, just just say that prayer that Aaron and I talked about earlier. Just ask, hey, God, if you're real, reveal yourself. I mean, show me the real God, the true living God, the one that created all the things I'm looking at right now. 
So anyway, but you got 40,000 in Thailand, 40,000 in America. How many in Romania? Do you know? Look it up. I'm, not, I'm not sure of the number, but I know that in the city that I was in, I was literally 10 minutes from the train station. And the train station, just the train station was a major human trafficking hub. And I'm going to go there, what we talked about before we were, we started. When Trump went into office, a lot of people would say, oh, Trump didn't do good and do this. One of the very first things that he did in the in office was to work with people to stop human trafficking. And within months of him being elected, a major raid happened in Romania where there was a lot of girls that were saved, a lot of guys that were arrested. And you know what? Like you said before, we love those people. But the thing is, what they did is wrong. And I pray that they repent and come to the realization of Christ. And that's my prayer for everybody, not just these people that are doing this, but world leaders like Putin. I pray that Putin comes to Christ. And I know that's really tough for a lot of people with the whole thing in Ukraine. And I know that's getting a little off the subject. But the thing is, God still loves them so much that he sent his son. That's it. I don't want to preach too much. But, but if you look at these organizations that we listed off, okay, how many of these organizations are not faith-based? All the, all the ones that I know about are faith-based, are believe in, in Jesus and believe that everybody deserves freedom, especially that these kids can grow up and not have to be scarred, not have to go through therapy, not have to, in some of them don't even grow up. Some get to the part where their enslavement, their captivity has brought them to, uh, to either being strung out on drugs or so messed up that they commit suicide. And, and that's not the world that I want to live. That's not the world that I want to bring a, a child into. And I, pr I, that's why we're standing in the gap. That's why we're praying. Because we want to see people set free, healed, delivered, and changed for the better. Man, absolutely. So I, I told you that in an upcoming show, I happen to, to know uh, somebody that's going to be a presidential candidate in 2028 for the election in 2029. And we actually covered this topic. I had asked him his thoughts on, and he'll probably share this, but I, I hope he doesn't mind me talking about it. So he said he's got an easy solution. He said most people that he talks to say that a firing squad is the best solution, but he doesn't believe that's the best solution. He believes that's an easy out. He believes in chemical castration. And all of a sudden, the loot, they say, oh, you can't do that. That's not right. These MFers don't have consequence for what they're doing. They get protected. Victim, I forget what rights they call it. Protective rights. They have protective rights. But it's very easy for them to do this. Because they know they're not going to, they got to go through hassle but they're not getting the ball cut off. You castrate them and watch what happens. So Thailand and America, you want to solve your problem? Start castrate. And don't rush into it, obviously. You want to make sure that they're you know, innocent to proven guilty because there are those mistakes that happen. So let them sit on the row. Uh, but the rest of their life, they're castrated. Now, somebody brought up a point that they have fingers and hands and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about letting them back on the street. No, there's no rehabilitation for them. They're done. They're toast. They crossed over that line. There's no coming back. Now, I believe in redemption. I believe, don't misunderstand it. I believe Jesus can heal them completely, but you, you as a society can't trust them. You cannot trust them. Because I know the enemy, what he's like, and you just got to, that's what this guy said to me, and it resonated with that solution. Castrate. Mm -hmm. Let him pay for what. I left the man speechless. I never thought I could see that. I left the man speechless. He's okay. Once again, we weren't expecting to go down this path. Yeah. We told you the intro of our show, the website, and our first introduction was 
you ain't never attended a show like this before in the mm-hmm. planet Earth. There are probably others out there. I don't want to, they're not. Aaron and I, this is as far as the one we know that's very unique. But here's the thing. There's a movie called Sound of Freedom that exposes us all. I cried through 90% of it. I have the spirit of intercession. Those of you who don't know what the spirit of intercession means, it means you're praying for another. So I was literally interceding for these children. Because I knew that these were real children it was based on a true story. It was just horrible, horrendous. Mm-hmm. Those of you who don't have a stomach, don't see it. The thing was about this movie, it was so profound. At the end, James Casaville, Cavis, Casaville, the actor, he's the one who played Jesus in the Passion, uh, of Christ, he was in this movie. And he said it took five years. They had this film made five years ago. They had to battle Hollywood for five years. All those cute little girls, all those mom and pop, all those lesbian couples, all those homosexual company couples that talk about, and heterosexual couples talk about doing good, feed the world, and let's kumbaya, up your ass. That's what I say. I say that to you because you're disgusting. You're pigs. You know what? Omission is just as much of a sin. It's sick. Omission. If I turn my back, they oh, I don't know what's going on. Nothing happened here. Move on. Hollywood resisted. They're all black. Black ball. Mia Stavino. All of them. Jane Casaville. They'll never work in Hollywood again. Why? Because Hollywood are a bunch of freaks. They're pedophiles. I was about to go somewhere else. I won't. No, I'm not going to. They're pedophiles. It's, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. They, they, they talk about the Catholic Church, which are a lot of priests, because I don't believe you can make a vow of chastity unless the Holy Spirit really asks you to do that. So when you're religiousized or organized, personal consecration to our Lord's Savior Jesus Christ, I, it doesn't work. Religion is dead works. So you have, I'm not excusing them, but you have all this sin being propagated in the Catholic Church. So all these organizations, the Boy Scouts, it all gets exposed. The light is exposed in the darkness. People say, oh, the world's so much worse. Have you read the Bible? The world's not worse. It's the same. And consecration-wise, numbers-wise, same. Not percentage-wise. Whatever. So yeah, so these Hollywood freaks, she males, the works. And again, I love these people, but they're perverted and they have to take major amounts of drugs to sleep at night because they're not living where they truly were created to be. So a mask is a mask is a mask is a mask is a mask. So I love you enough to say, I know you're masked. I know you're not comfortable. I know it's not love conquers all because you don't know what love is. You don't even love yourself. You hate yourself. That's why you, you mutilate your body. Anybody that hates themselves to mutilate their body. That's what we're talking about. So love is the answer, but it's true love. It's love. It's a God thing. Jesus said to Peter three times, do you love me? And it wasn't until the third time that he understood what kind of love Jesus was asking about. He said, yeah, I guess I don't. Because Jesus said, do you love me in action? Do you God be love? Love in action. So what does love look like? Love looks like this show. Do I sound harsh? You better believe it. Cause somebody needs a wake-up call tonight. Somebody needs to point that effing remote Turn it off. Finally do something. Become the man or woman that you were created to be. Make a difference in your community. Make a difference. Start with your family. Make a difference in your sphere of influence. It's going to be hard. I know life is not easy. It's hard. I, I grew up in a very highly abusive family. So you talk about the stuff they never did the, what the poor children had happened to them. But I had systemic abuse from both parents. So I understand what it's like to be an abused child. I love them and I forgive them completely. I hold nothing. Both of my parents are with the Lord. I led both of my parents to salvation. So here's the thing. How does that happen that a child that gets abused leads the very abusers to salvation? Only one way, through Christ. God. Wasn't Vinnie Arico. So the thing is that make a difference. Really care. Stop self-medicating. Stop all the soft habits. The Duco puzzles, they're great, but if they're a habit, they're not great. They keep you from praying to God, or they keep you from getting out in the street, then they're habit forming that are not good. They're toxic. Jeopardy, great program. But if you're addicted to Jeopardy rather than helping a senior citizen in your city, 
It's not a good program. A lot of senior citizens at 730 at night are watching Jeopardy by themselves. Well, I go, want to go to the nursing home that's next to them. Do you need to speak to them about Jesus? I probably would, but you don't have to. Just hold their hand. Hear their story. Listen to the veteran's story. Listen. You don't know what that does to that person. You don't know what they were thinking. Suicide is very high among senior citizens in those living facilities. Oh, they call it a, a medical mistake? No, it ain't no medical mistake. I guarantee you that they're, they're convincing the nurse to, to make the medical mistake. I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I don't care. I'm telling you that's what's happening. It wasn't a medical mistake. It was a compassionate nurse. I'm, I'm being real. I know I'm losing people on it, but it's, I don't care. What does the face of compassion look like? It has many different colors, many different accents, many different shades, many different eye colors. But it all bleeds love. If you just truly connect with love, all things are possible. See, Isaiah 50, and I'm not preaching, I'm not religious, so don't freak out. You people that are atheists, close your eyes and, and whistle dinner, Dixie or something like that during this part. So listen, but this is important. But those of you that open-minded atheists, listen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So guess what? How you get his thoughts is spend time with him. And he may give you a wild thought. Like he gave me a thought, and see, this is what incenses me. There's people in this, there's people in this nation, Thailand, that are saved. And they know there's only a 0.8% 0.8% people are saved in this country. So this was Christmas, but I wanted to do something good on Christmas. So I, God gave me a strategy. My wife and I were going to go down to one of the worst streets in Thailand where these children prostitutes were. And we were going to pay the price. So the prostitute was going to think they were going to have a three-way so that the pimp doesn't know what's going on. The pimp knows what's going on. And we were going to, we were going to rescue this child, but there weren't enough resources. So we weren't, and hopefully there are organizations in here. What thought was in the back of my mind is I don't want to put this girl in a religious organization. And I shouldn't have that thought. You know why I don't have that thought? Because religious people don't love. They judge. They judge. They live in trapped boxes themselves. So if I live in a box, how am I going to set you free? If I live in a box, how am I going to set you free? So eventually we will connect with the organization, but that's a great, it's not a great way to do it, Aaron. You know what I'm saying? You go down, you're free enough not to have that stuff flying you, but you pay for a girl and then you set her free. You get her out. You get her completely out. That's a love dream. So I, yeah, we don't want to put these people in, in religious situations or religious organizations. We want to put them in compassionate organizations. Like right. you said, people that, that ooze love, that ooze right. what God's given them and have the heart and compassion to say, hey, no, but no child needs to go through this. And to make a difference, I know it's like going against the tide. The waves might be crashing, but these people are like, you know what? I don't care how hard those waves are going to come against me. I'm going to go and I'm going to rescue there was a movie called Hacksaw Ridge or something like that, yes. where this guy was a, he was a, a medic and his thing was, Lord, just give me the strength to get one more person. And he would get one more person and then bring the person to safety. And then he would say, okay, Lord, give me strength to get one more person. And that's what I love about Love 142. And these other ministries is that's their heart. They're not focused on getting, let's save a million girls. No, they're like, let me save one. And then after that, let me save another one and let me save another one. And, and that's what we want to see in America, both, both in battling against human trafficking, battling against substance and drug abuse, battling against people that are the homeless battling, helping out where we can to, to going against the waves. Lord, give us the strength and the power 
to touch one life. Like I said in, in the other episode, the phrase that I absolutely love that he that saves one life saves the world entire. And it's all about getting that one person. And that's what I'm happy about these ministries that do that to stop human trafficking. Will we see it in our lifetime? I hope so. I really do. You want to? Yeah. Before I do, what about the strategy of becoming the children's ambassador in your town? Be the watchman on the wall or watchwoman on the wall. Stand in the gap. Organize. Do it. Just start. Going to make mistakes. It's going to be messy. Any birth, any mother will tell you how messy it is to birth a child. It's not clean, folks. But then look at the day that you become a mature organization and you get that award from a humanitarian reward for your efforts. And I know it's not about that, but it is because it's all about the influence that you can have. So I hope really today we inspired somebody to say, you know what? These guys are real. They care. They really care. And I should, I care too, but I've been placed. I've been afraid. So father, what I pray right now is break off the spirit of fear from every one of my listeners, our listeners, they're not mine. They're your listeners, but every one of our listeners, break off the spirit of fear, fear of condemnation. Just break off any bondage in their lives that are keeping them back, becoming organizers in their community for the children. Because totally, Lord, you told me it's all about the children. It's our future. It's our life. It's the reflection of society. Look at the children. Look what's happening to the children. What the, the, what the world that the child is the reflection of the leaders of the country. I, I know my buddy, he's really convinced that he can make a difference. And I can stand behind somebody like that. It can be one person with God. It can be one person with God. So I pray that my listeners, to our listeners, that I make a difference. God bless America. But more importantly, God bless America is God loves the babies. God loves the babies. God loves the babies. We love you. Till next week. Until next week, signing out, Mr. Man and Richie Arico. And the best with a capital B is yet to come. Take care. Bye, everybody.